let's get to our topic of the day, everyone. So it's a serious matter because when a former president is speaking, then you know that is a serious issue. Yesterday, the former president, Gulag Jonathan, launched a book entitled My Transition Hours. It was a book a, which it uh, said presented his mind on some of the final moments of his presidency. President Muhammad Buhari has once again saluted former President Gulag Jonathan's sportsmanship in conceding defeat after the 2015 election. It was represented by the SGF. It was an event well attended with leaders from several African countries. President Buhari's message was delivered by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. He emphasized former President Jonathan's insistence that no Nigerian blood was worth his political ambition, describing him as a true patriot. There were a lot of uh, issues on the mind of the former president, which were obviously presented in the new book. From issues relating to the kidnap of the Chibok school girls, to how he considered defeat in 2015, the issues of the economy, how he perceives power, and the politics of the 2015 elections. Let's dissect them uh, tonight, some of the key points in the book. I have quotes from the book, which will help us navigate somehow through the minds of former President Gulag Jonathan. Joining me from our Buja studio is a former Director General of the National Productivity Center, Dr. Faith Roberts. And here in our Buja studio is Mr. Curtis Adiba, a political consultant and a lawyer. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Let me begin tonight with you, Dr. Roberts. And let's flip through some of the quotes from the book. And uh, on the issues of um, uh, considering the fit, the former president said, and I quote, when I say severally that my political ambition is not worth the blood of any Nigerian, I really meant it. And about the tax on his person, he said, and I quote, God will fight for us. After God, it is government. These people will crush us because they don't know God, but let us rely on God. Well, let me ask you, Dr. Roberts. Does a former president think he is being witch hunted by this government? Um, thank you very much, Cheryl, for having me on the show. Um, I mean, it's, it was pretty obvious uh, from the, uh, as soon as the transition period was uh, concluded, that uh, a lot of uh, name calling, a lot of propaganda, propaganda directed specifically at, at the former president and his immediate family and aides, you know, was the order of the day. And, uh, you know, if you do not talk about President Jonathan and his failures and the things that he did or should have done that he didn't do, uh, it looks like, you know, the government had not uh, said anything until they blamed Jonathan. So everything was about, basically about, you know, Jonathan. They forgot about, you know, how to move the country forward, how to make plans towards ensuring that the transition period, you know, the economy that Jonathan handed over to them, you know, was sustained and even improved upon. But, you know, they, they, they wasted uh, several months, uh, going up to years, you know, blaming Jonathan and failing, you know, to do the things that they were supposed to do, things that they were elected you know, to do, and all of the promises that they made to Nigerians upon which, you know, they were elected uh, to power. So, yeah, it was a blame game from, 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 from inception uh, after Jonathan graciously, you know, considered defeat without any uh, inducement, voluntarily uh, considered defeat, uh, which is, was a historic fest for us. And, you know, for that reason alone, I mean, it should have been that you know, this man that was gracious enough not to have even contended the results of this election, you know, should have been given you know, the honor and regard that is due him and should have, you know, given him a peaceful retirement. But, you know, the exactly the, the, the reverse was the case. He was haunted, his aides were haunted, his family was haunted, you know, all over the place. So it was very uncharitable, you know, that uh, the... Uh, uh, the Dr. Roberts, you know, is it a case of uh, uh, people being haunted or people being haunted? Uh, there are cases in court over issues of uh, allegations of corruption. Are you saying that maybe the government of the day should have looked away because perhaps some of those things happened and some of these allegedly linked to people close to the former president? Yes, thank you, Sheru. Uh, if, you, if, if you've read the book, you know, uh, Jonathan talked uh, very much about corruption. And he always gave, you know, most of the major issues that he talked about. He gave historical precedences, historical analysis, you know, of how some of these issues, you know, came to be. So the issue of corruption, he talked about it explicitly, you know, the antecedents where corruption from the first day that uh, the first military coup in Nigeria has been corruption. So 
So when you talk about corruption and then you reference Jonathan as the embodiment of corruption, that is so uncharitable. Okay, it makes it look like you know, corruption just started with the regime of Jonathan. But let me, let me talk about the, your, the question that you asked. Now, if you're talking about corruption uh, without being biased, and then you're looking at both sides of the window, if you're looking at both sides of the divide, because there are definitely APC governors and you know, persons who were in authority you know, prior to the uh, APC government, in, in, in the previous government, but not, not even a single one of them you know, has been on the media, has been invited to, uh, to, to the AFCC office and been detained. Uh, can, you, can you tell me any single APC government, governmental individual that was in the previous government that has been detained even for an hour? So the corruption was obviously, the corruption fight was obviously, you know, targeted, you know, towards a predetermined end to ensure that, uh, you know, giving a dog a bad name, you know, that to hang it. So that was the entire strategy. You know, let's the let's bring... So uh, there was actually no... Let's bring was no uh, uh, Mr. Adiba into the conversation. Really Okay, so just a moment. Let's bring Mr. Adigba into the conversation. I'd like you to also react to uh, those uh, first uh, uh, quotes that I got from the book of uh, uh, the former president uh, when he said uh, that my political ambition is not worth the of any Nigerian. And he said, God will fight for us. After God and his government, these people will crush us because they don't know God, but let us rely on God. Any kind of witch hunt on the, from the accounts of the former president. Thank you for having me. I would like to open by asking if, if the former president is first and foremost a witch. Because when you cry about being witch hunted, you have got to be a witch for people to hunt you. And I don't think he's one. I think President Jonathan, if you ask me, is a good man. Okay? He's done what we expected him to do in a democratic setting. He said it very clearly from the one. My ambition is not worth the blood of anybody. And he, he, he lived up to his word. And I think that was quite... Has he made himself a hero yeah, in, that, that, that was in Africa's politics? Yes, in African politics, in global politics. I think it was quite commendable, given the fact that at that particular time, everybody thought that Nigeria was just going to implode or explode. But it didn't happen just because he de-escalated the entire tension. But having said that, he then said that God will fight for them, for him and his group. And if God doesn't fight for them, then government will fight for them. Well, how can the same government, peopled by evil people who don't know God, now fight for you? I think that's a, that's a contradiction. If you believe that God will fight for you, but if God fails to fight for you, the government will fight for you. The same government you are saying is peopled by evil people who don't know God. That's a contradiction. He said, these people will crush us. Yes. And, but they are the, the people that will crush them are the same people in government that do not know God. That's exactly what he said. It doesn't that look what, like that is happening, considering what Dr. Robert said. That, look, I, I think, I think in, problem, in the light of fighting corruption with this administration. No, I have some issues with what Dr. Robert has said, respectfully so. The fact that the former president considered defeat it's not a ground to overlook everything that happened under his administration. Look, this is a society and a country that is governed by laws. And people can be called to answer questions where there are grounds to do so. And so the main fact that President, former President Jonathan gave up his mandate after he had been defeated, which was a commendable thing I've said, does not mean that whoever had served under him or even the president himself, if he had got questions to answer, that he cannot be someone to answer those questions. Right. Uh, let me quickly show you this, uh, because you are an expert also in international politics, especially the politics of the United States. The former president said something about the, uh, the U.S. former president, Barack Obama. Let me show you this quote quickly. He said, quote, for some strange reasons, the Obama administration had tactically penciled Nigeria and my administration down for failure. At those moments in Nigeria's history, when former President Gulo Jonathan was there, does that appear so? I, I, have, I have not seen any evidence of the Obama thinking on Nigeria and penciling Jonathan down and his government as failure. What I do understand, however, is that the U.S. has got traditional role to play in democratic nations. And what they do is to look, put pressure on the government in power to ensure that you respect 
democratic ethos. The Obama administration, did they influence the, no, no, no. the what, election no, at that time? No, they didn't. What, what I'm saying is this. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me pause it for a moment. Oh, uh, right. My director is telling me that I should go <laughs> on a short break. Let's take a break now, everyone. Uh, whatever you are doing is just going to be for a moment because we'll be back to dissect more on this. I have several quotes from the book. I know a lot of you may not have read it. I have had the opportunity to flip through some of the pages, but we'll continue with the conversation right after now, everyone. Join us again.